Vac and Goss on 104.5 The Team. Every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, it's the State of the Empire right here on 104.5 The Team about the Albany Empire. And, of course, you can catch all the games on our sister station, Alt 105.7. Joining us right now, Arthur Hobbs. Mr. Mr. Hobbs, now, first of all, I have some. I have to give you some information as a, as the you know a defensive back. Did you know that Darius Reynolds, the wide receiver from the Soul, was in the stands scouting you guys last week? I did see him before the game started. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Because I walked up to him. I'm like, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I mean, I wouldn't be driving five hours to go watch a game the day before my game, but I mean. That's what he wants to do. Then hey. he's that scared of you. Is what we're, is what, is what, is the way I took it. We have good battles. <laughs> we got good battles for sure. <laughs> I can't wait for the matchup. You're going to be there. Philadelphia still taking on the Albany Empire. We'll get onto that matchup in a little bit. But you and I are like in similar age here. I think we're like a month apart when we're actually born. And I noticed that's the six one nine underneath the eyes before the games. Did you grow up as a big Reggie Bush fan? I did. Uh, I think anyone that's uh, born in, in San Diego that is associated with football, likes Reggie Bush. So uh, he's he's a big part of what we do in California as far as athletes and uh, football goes. And uh, if I wanted to be a running back, I would like to be like Reggie Bush. <laughs> he was you, amazing, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you ever ask to like, you know, hey, coach, man, just if you if there's a run plan, I know Malachi's all special and whatever, but don't forget about 24 over here. Give you know what, ball. man? I did tell him to uh, put me in the game if we're up and just throw me a screen and just let me see what I can do with it. <laughs> and, he, and he said, and he said, we'll, we'll see, you know. See, uh, I love that. No. Jeez, I got to ask you this question because obviously you know a lot more about arena football mm-hmm. than I do. I mean, we had the Firebirds and then we had a, a vac- the conquest and a vacancy for a while. And thank God you guys are here now. Why so many onside kicks, man? You guys had, I felt like you had that game and then onside kicks at the, at the half kind of leveled the playing field. Well, see, the thing is with the onside kicks, it's all about uh, time of possession. So if, um, if we're going to kick the ball to uh, a quarterback, right, the, the other team, uh, and we know that they have the capability of holding the ball for five, six minutes. Uh, it only makes sense to onside kick them because uh, then they can only get one first down, right? They can't waste five minutes off the clock. They have to score fast, and then our offense gets the ball back faster. So then now we can be the team who holds the ball for five minutes in which we want to score last before the half and at the end of the game. So when, so when we talk to Coach later this week, don't don't really hammer him for that because I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I think I think you should hammer him, and I think uh, he he's gonna do a really good job of explaining to you why we do it. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that come to the games that are unfamiliar with why we onside. Kick but as so a much. defender, don't you wish like just kick it away? I'll stop him. Yeah, no. I sometimes <laughs> as a DB, it's like nah, let's let's make them drive the length of the field. Uh, but uh, due to the fact that I I know systematically what we're doing, uh, sometimes it is necessary to try to sneak an onside kick in there. We got Arthur Haas with us right now from the Albany Empire. The game this week against the Soul, uh, six o'clock kickoff, three o'clock the block party starts, and uh, man, we're glad you're here. Yeah, we're glad you're here, and it's almost like a lot of your teammates who have spent time with us in studio. We want people to learn how you guys ended up in arena football. Take us through the journey of how you ended up being a part of the Albany Empire. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, three years ago, I didn't know anything about uh, the arena football league really. Uh, my first uh, stint was with the Orlando Predators, and obviously uh, my coach now, uh, Rob Keefe, was my head coach uh, my rookie year in the Arena Football League. Um, he scouted me when I played in Canada. I played in Canada in the CFL for the Hamilton Tiger Cats before I got down to the Arena League. And uh, I actually uh, had an opportunity to go play with the San Jose team uh, before they folded. And then uh, once I actually got a chance to speak to Coach Keefe on the phone, uh, we all know he has the gift of gab, right? So <laughs> I'll, I'll come play for you. Stop. No. Right. So, so I, I came and I played for him in uh, 2016, and uh, I had a, a good year um, as, as far as uh, learning the game and building some good relationships and, and some good friends. And obviously, uh, I liked playing for uh, Coach Keith, uh, and that's why I came back to to play for him again. I got to be honest. When I hear Hamilton Tiger Cats now, I think of Johnny Manziel. There can you my, go. Can my guy Manziel <laughs> do it? Can my guy Manziel <laughs> succeed in the CFL? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. And uh, you know, if if he can't, uh, they also have a quarterback named Jeremiah Masoli, who's who's been their quarterback for the last five six years. A really good buddy of mine. So with him and Johnny in the backfield, they they can get some some stuff done. True sure. story about Masoli. If he's a good buddy, did he go to the City College of San Francisco? He did. So and he killed it. He absolutely <laughs> he killed, killed it. it. It was bad because for my teammate, <laughs> uh, Kevin Merchant Donnie, he was his backup and he went to Hobart. Okay. So he had to sit behind Masoli at mm-hmm. Community College. And it's like, 
I had to get him? Really? <laughs> like the dude? Yeah, so. Maselli's the man, bro. Yeah. He's the man. <laughs> that would be, see, but now in my mind now, I don't want Manziel to work out in the Canadian Football League because I want him to be the heir apparent to Grady. So you go from like the tallest quarterback uh, in the league uh, to the shortest. Because <laughs> I just think that picture would be awesome. <laughs> I like that idea. I like that idea for sure. Oh, Johnny so Special. Special. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, I think, I think his game suited for the wider field. Like that's, mm-hmm. I think that's my question for you. You you were in Canada. It's the the biggest field because mm-hmm. it's wider than what we have here. Yes, sir. And now you're on a fifty yard with walls. Right. Like what? How do you make that to like from having all kinds of open? Like <laughs> as a DB, is it better? Is it worse? What is it? Uh, you know what? I think that uh, playing in Canada actually helped me a lot because the field is so big. Um, in the arena, you know, you can rely on the walls uh, as an extra defender, and I think that sometimes it can make defensive players lazy. Um, but in Canada, there's there's that's a soccer field, right? So uh, you've got uh, guys at each position who are a little smaller, generally speaking, than in the NFL, but they're more mobile. So everyone's running around like crazy madmen. And if you're a DB, you can cover in the Canadian Football League, then you'll be well off. <laughs> Just amazing to think you played in Canada. You grew up in California. Did you play your college ball in Nebraska? I did. I, My I, goodness, <laughs> man, you've been all over the place. I've been I've been everywhere, man, and uh, playing. The two years in Nebraska was uh, very humbling. It was a culture shock to me. Uh, I came from a situation that was totally different. And then uh, I went up there and, and I really learned what it was like to be a student athlete. Uh, hence the student part first. Right? I wasn't always <laughs> just an athlete. Um, and uh, went there, uh, stuck to my studies and had a really, really blessed senior season, uh, which led me to get picked up by the San Diego Chargers, which was the hometown team, obviously. So. Good experience. It was fun, man. I grew up a Raiders fan, so you probably there you don't go. Me too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you like what you like. I'm right, right. <laughs> so Arthur Hobbs with us right now. Arthur, last last week or Hobbs, I probably is probably a little more. You tried, I go by Hobbs. Hobbs, yeah. okay. Is is that cool? Because I don't yeah, want yeah, I don't sure. want to be rude. You don't right want to get come over the middle. All of a <laughs> right. I, I just told him a Raiders fan. He's gonna jump over the screen. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Raiders fan and rude. <laughs> that that black hole is something I don't want right. to mess with. Well, Vegas soon. So that, yeah, that, man. That, then we all have to go. Mm-hmm. We'll have to get uh, Jordan over there in your office. To I'm schedule down. a trip. I'm Let's right. go in the off season. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. So Hobbs, you guys it, during the win streak, it uh-huh. seemed especially with Hills with Joe Hills out there, the wide receiver. Mm-hmm. You were able to keep your composure, and the other teams were kind of blown up. Mm-hmm. It seemed like, and you can please correct me if I'm wrong, at the end of, of last week's game against Baltimore, mm-hmm. you guys were the ones who were starting to get a little angry, a little pushy, a little mm-hmm. shovey. It, it is, it, is that something you noticed, and, and how do you keep that from happening when you see a team as much as you guys see these other teams? No, no, you're absolutely right. I think that uh, uh, last game was, uh, was clearly one of those situations in which uh, we let – I uh, think small things get to us. Uh, you know, we had a, a couple calls that didn't go our way. And generally speaking, you know, we just... Yeah, brushed. the refs were terrible. I can say it, you can't. I, I, <laughs> right, I'll, right. I'll say it. You, I, you know, can that, you pay I, the fine, too, or no? There's no fine. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they, don't, they don't find the mascots and the idiots running around throwing T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> they just try to trip us when we come out the tunnel. <laughs> I said they did a great job, but maybe missed a few angles. That's yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Nice. yeah. I, I, I play defense, man. So, you know, anytime a, a call is made that's not in my favor, of course I'm going to disagree. Right. Uh, but the refs do a good job. Every call can't go in our favor. And with that being said, uh, we had uh, a couple guys just, just do to the nature of the game, uh, you know, lose their cool for a second. And uh, generally speaking, if we're winning and that happens, it's not a big uh, a blemish, right? But if we're losing or the game's close and that happens, it stands out a lot more. So uh, I think that it just comes from us being more accountable and just pulling guys back. And, you know, we we do a good job of, of playing the game, right? So we don't really need the, the whole verbal and, and all the other stuff. So... I think this is just one of those games where it's a learning experience for all of us, and, and coach addressed it, and now we know no flags. <laughs> Going into the season, the Philadelphia Soul, the defending champions, when this whole empire thing is coming together, mm-hmm. whether it be the first practice, the first game, whatever it is, it's got to be the Soul as a team you guys have to take down. This is mm-hmm. the top of the league, so there's got to feel like something extra every time you match up with them. Yeah, man, I uh, because I played them in the championship last year, playing for Tampa, I still got a sore uh, taste in my mouth <laughs> about right. about Philly, man. And you know what? They got a really good team. And uh, every time we play them, it's, it's it's a good competition. It really is. They got a bunch of, uh, of talented players over there on the offensive side of the ball. And just like us, they got a great defense too. So uh, I think anytime we play them, the game is going to be intense just because of who they are and who we are. And uh, whenever two good teams play against each other, you're always going to see a lot of combustion. So... <laughs> Well, Hobbs, Hobbs with uh, Arthur Hobbs, defensive back for the Albany Empire. I don't think I'd ever seen an arena team play defense the way you guys play defense. Like, mm-hmm. like if, if 
defensive team was almost an insult to arena teams back in the day. But you guys actually, like just recently, the over started to come into play in Vegas right. and stuff in your games. Is, is that something that, that, that Coach Keith brings to the table? Is that just the mindset of you guys? Like what, what makes you guys such a good defensive team? I think, I think it starts with Coach Keith, right? Um, he's the mastermind behind everything we do defensively, right? Obviously, he can't play for us, but he draws up everything that we run. And um, I think that's where it starts, the, the systematic uh, part of the approach of everything. But then what Coach Keith did is he went out and got guys who genuinely like to be around each other, genuinely care for each other, and, and, and genuinely uh, want to be around each other, not just during practice but off the field. And so he went and got a bunch of guys who played together before, uh, there's there's several guys that was that are on my team now that were on my 2016 team in Orlando with Coach Keith as the head coach, um, so he's smart. Uh, he just he brought in a bunch of cohesive parts, and uh, we've got each other's back, man, and it's showing. It really is showing. Have you been enjoying the Capital Region in Albany? Are, are you almost surprised by how much of support there's been here locally for you guys? I am surprised, and it, it only took me until our first team event to realize how how crazy it was here uh, in Albany. Um, when I got here, it was cold, like really cold. I'm not from California, so I hate the cold. <laughs> uh, so we, I, we're from here, and we hate the cold. Right. <laughs> it's all right. So I didn't go out much, man. But uh, it's, I can't even wear, you know, like an Albany uh, hoodie to Walmart without like someone saying like "good game" or you know, "hope you guys win this weekend." And the support is awesome. Um, I, you know, I've been fortunate enough to play for some good franchises in the Arena Football League, and I would say Al- Albany has the, you know the best fans, hands down. You know, it's crazy. You know, even when we lose. Uh, at the end of the game, the fans, the support is just crazy. You know, like at the end, the end of the last game, I had a couple of fans come up to me and uh, and just tell tell me, like, you know, we're season ticket holders. You know, win, lose, or draw. You know, we're here for you guys. You know, we're going to be here next week. And that means a lot to us, you know, because when we lose, you know, we think the fans hate us. <laughs> you know, we don't want to let anyone down, you know, right. I mean? especially not our team. Um, but when you got fans who support you like they do here, uh, it just means a lot. And I think that goes hand in hand with the way we win, right, because – the, the home field advantage really plays into that. Uh, and I watch it uh, every home game. You know, uh, we go away, and uh, I hear some some crazy stuff in the fans, <laughs> from the fans, right? right? But when teams come here, our fans have our back, and I've heard some some crazy stuff being said to the other teammates so, or the other team. So I love it, man. It's, it's cool. I, I appreciate the support, and, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to, to keep it going here. Love it. Arthur Hobbs, uh, defensive back of the Albany Empire. Uh, this week, one of the, one of the reasons that we, we've – been so starved for for a team your caliber to be back here the albany firebird is gonna be honored at halftime you mm-hmm. you'll be busy you won't be able to be out there right. but uh that we're, we're excited to see them get honored and you guys are doing them so real justice with the way you're playing so so thank you for that and i ask you though like when guys and i are out there running around throwing out t-shirts do you guys wish we were gone so you can just get back to work <laughs> no man you know you know what actually uh we like all that entertainment okay. and stuff because okay. Believe it or not, man, some guys are, t- are winded during those segments. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> so so uh, it's like an extra TV timeout for See, us. See, that's what we need. We need like a yeah. hand gesture where like guys and I know, all right, we're going to walk real slow uh-huh. off the field. It's good. Okay. We need more hot dogs here at halftime. Please just keep Yeah, no, out. keep yeah. doing it. Man. Keep doing it. And then, too, if Coach has corrections, you know, he can use that time to, you know, come over to us and make some corrections and he doesn't have to physically call a timeout and, and put us in that situation. So keep throwing T-shirts, you know, throw one to me. I'll keep it. <laughs> He's, he keeps our biggest fear because we know he wants to tackle somebody. He does. And we, like, I'm afraid one of these times it's going to be us. <laughs> no. I, think, I think anyone on our side is good. All right, all right, good. Uh, Haas, man, thank you so much for coming in. Best for of luck sure. this week. Six o'clock kickoff. Uh, halftime is the Firebirds. Three o'clock, the block party. I find that the fans are crazier and more fun if they get there right at three for the block party. Yeah, they are. With the, and, and I found out this week, and this is something I know, obviously, Hobbs, you can't enjoy this, but guys and I can. The beers are cheaper inside the atrium. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell people that. You want to save some money and avoid some lines. There's a couple beer carts inside the atrium. I'm just not, not that. I mean, not you know, just here to help. Just doing doing my service, man. I, you definitely just help somebody. Else. See what I did? You know what I mean? All right, Hobbs, man. Best of luck this week. Take out Reynolds for spying, man. Don't let it. Don't for let sure, that happen, man. man. Good luck this week uh, against the Soul. And then um, I've finally found a way. I think to get LeBron to play in New York. Just might not be for a long time. Oh, yeah? (laughs) I'm Roger Weiland. Coming up tomorrow on Big Board Sports, we're talking World Cup soccer with Andrew Williams from Sirius XM and Valley Cats Baseball with Media Relations Director Chris Chinas.